It's okay. I can cut it. It's not a big deal. All right. So here's number seven. Number seven here, uh, it's a long question. So this is only part A and part B and part C. Uh, it's 14 marks. If you recognize this question from uh, what we did in class, that would be great. Actually, IB is actually being very nice to you because it separates the question into part A, part B, part C. And part A, it kind of, kind of tells you what to do to set up the question. Uh, if you recognize this question, you're gonna remember something similar. Uh, we did something similar in class. And when you read part B, you see a keyword, right? It says minimum. Right? And then here, minimum. So by looking at that, you know, this is an optimization question. And usually on a, on a test, I would just go directly here, find a minimum uh, time that you would need to go from point A to point B, or find a minimum cost of the trip going from point A to point B. But IB feels that if that's the question, you may not know where to start and not get a single mark. So they're trying to kind of like bring it in slowly so that you can figure out what you're trying to do. So they gave you the distances and they gave you some angles. And then they also give you the speed of the boat and the speed along the road. So the bus and the boat. So find the travel time in hours from A to B, given that the boat is taken from A to B and then bus from P to B. Well, that's not hard. You just need to find the time across the river and the time along the shore. This part is 65 kilometers. Time is distance divided by speed. So 65 kilometers divided by the speed of the boat, which is 42. Uh, that's, I can, I can call that a T1. This is T2, that's 215 kilometers divided by the speed of the uh, bus, which is 84. And the total time travel would be the two. So for part one, T is equal to T1 plus T2, which is 65 over 42 plus 215 over 84. Take our calculator, multiply and add uh, the 4.11 hours is what I have here. Okay, round off to 366. So that's uh, A part one. If I'm gonna take the boat and going across. All right, so part two of the question is, well, what if I don't wanna do that? I'm gonna boat directly over from point A all the way to point B. Okay, so that would be the shortest distance, but it may not be the shortest time because the boat is slower than on bus. Now, that's the case, then I would need, so this is part one. Part two, I need to do Pythagorean theorem to find the uh, distance. So this distance is gonna be 215 square plus 65 square. And D is going to be the square root of that. And that's going to be the distance. And um, I'm going to take that distance and divide it by the speed of the boat, which is uh, 42. Yeah, the boat is 42 kilometers per hour and round it up to three six thick. So this is about 224.6. Now I'm probably not gonna round it off. I'm gonna keep the answer, right? Use the answer button divided by 42, then round. Um, I'm getting about 5.35 hours. Okay, so that's if you take uh, a boat directly from point A to point B. 
Okay, so IB here is trying to help you to understand the situation. You can do the shortest distance on the boat because that would be the minimum distance for the boat, right? If you go straight across and then along the shore. Or the other scenario would be if you go from A to B directly on the boat. And this is faster than that. However, is 4.11 the best possible you can do? What if I go like somewhere in the middle and then go across with the bus ride? So you can see part B, now they're asking you to minimize that traveling time. And they want to help you because uh, they, they're afraid you don't understand how to set it up. So what they are telling you to do here, um, actually, let me redraw the diagram on this side. Um, So this is your point A, this is your point B, this is your point P, I believe, let me see. Yeah. And it says here, there's a point D which lies between them. So that BD is X, okay? This is still uh, 65. This, is, this whole thing is still 215. But now this little part would be 215 minus X, right? Okay. So find an expression in terms of X for the travel time from A to B passing through D. Well, this little part is easy. Time two is gonna be X, which is the distance divided by the speed, I believe it's 84, right? Now T1 is gonna be a little different now. T1 is the distance divided by 42, but what's that distance? Well, that's another Pythagorean theorem with the 65 and 215 minus X, but it's a little trickier. So I'm gonna call this D again. D squared is gonna be 65 squared plus 215 minus X, uh, I don't know here, squared. So D is gonna be the square root of that. And that goes in the numerator here because all they want is an expression. They didn't ask you to solve for it. You can't solve for it because you don't know what the value of X is. Ah, two. Okay. The, the question asks you to come up with the, an expression, find an expression. So B1, you want that expression. T is equal to X over 84 plus the square root of 65 square plus 215 minus X square divided by 42. So that's B1. B2, find a value of X so that this is the minimum. Now, finally, we get to the optimization question. How do we find optimization? We take the derivative, we set it equal to zero, and we solve for X. So this is the uh, tricky part. We can do it by hand or you can actually graph it and find a derivative. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, we'll, we'll do it by hand for now. Um, but IB would actually allow you to just graph this and find a derivative and find a point where derivative is equal to zero. If we, I think in class, what we did was we actually do it by hand. So T is equal to 80, um, one over 84 times X. So that's the derivative of that is easy. This part is the part that's a little hard. So it's one over 42. You have a power of a half. Okay. What's inside a bracket, you can leave it. Uh, no, sorry. I don't need the square root anymore, sorry. Um, 
what's inside a bracket? Some people say, well, can I expand it? Yes, but you don't really need to. You can expand it later on. You can just leave it like that. So I know it's a long thing to write, but you know, it's not a big deal. So derivative of this is a constant. That's easy. This, you're going to bring down the power. So one over two times one over 42. You have the bracket that does not change minus negative one. And then you multiply by the chain, right? The chain of this part is zero. So really what I need is this. I'm going to bring it over a little bit. Chain is um, two times two, one, five minus X to the power one. And then multiply by another chain because the X is negative X. Okay. Now, IB is actually not too bad when they set up this question, even though you may look like and say, oh, this is so complicated. Because the denominator, if you look at it, it's actually the same. See, that's also 84. So really, when you add them up, the denominator doesn't matter when you set it equal to zero. It's only the numerator that matters. And this is a native exponent. So that goes into the denominator as well. Right, that goes to the denominator as well. So the numerator is really just this part. So it's native two, 215 minus X. So common denominator, this becomes one minus two times 215 minus X, all divided by some junk. Um, oh wait, not yet. And here's where you probably want to punch in the graphing calculator um, because solving it may take a little bit of time. Um, because there's a square root here that you need to deal with. Yeah, I think if that's the case, might as well do the graphing calculator right here, because I think it's easier for you. So let me fill this part back in. That's 65 plus 215 minus X square. That's 65 square plus 215 minus X square. I think it's easier if you just put it in the graphing calculator right here or even if you don't want to simplify it, the first step, right? Because this is y1 is zero, y2 is that, and you just want to find where they meet or find the zeros. I know that's a little tricky to do on a graphing calculator, but it's not, uh, it's better than doing it algebraically. Okay, because I just look at it, you would have a square root that you need to do. So uh, we didn't really cover that in class. In class, we didn't cover square root functions like that. You would have to square both sides, a couple of times, it's a bit more work. And this, about, this part of the question is actually two marks. I know you said, what? All this for two marks? Uh, yeah, because IB, all, all they wanted to see is you take the derivatives and set it equal to zero and then one mark for the answer. Like no algebra is required for this particular question part of the question. If you do it correctly on your graphing calculator, you should get X equal 177 kilometers, roughly. Right, it's 177.472. So check it on your calculator and we can do that. Okay, and then they say write down the minimum value of T. Well, now know, I know what X is. I can sub it back in here and I can find the time. So again, it's only a one mark question for part three, sub X into the equation. And the time, total time should be about 3.9 hours. Okay, so now that we uh, got the minimum time, we're going to look at part C. Part C says, well, time may be important, but cost is also important. Here, the cost to rent a boat is $200 per hour. The cost to rent the bus 
it's $150 per hour. And if I want to um, minimize the total cost, well, what would I do? Well, what you would do then is you're going to take $10, no, not $150 multiplied by time two. And you're going to multiply time one by $200, right? So you see how this formula here, that was just time. Now, if I want the cost, I'm going to take the time for the um, bus ride, and I'm going to times it by 150. And then I'm going to take the time for the bow ride and multiply by that by 200. Now I get a cost formula. So part C, I'm just going to use the next page. So part C is the cost. So cost is equal to X over 42 times $150 plus $200 times, what was that again? Um, that's a long thing to write. Maybe I can copy and paste it. Ah, it's okay. Better than writing everything. Okay, so that's the new formula, basically, right? So when I take the derivative and find the minimum cost, then I'm going to do cost derivative you're gonna realize that this part and that part is gonna exactly the same as this, except I need to multiply this by 150 and except I need to multiply that by 200. So you can basically copy the same derivative down. But make sure you multiply this by 150 and you multiply that by 200. I'm just gonna multiply by the front end. Okay. And then again, graphing calculator, right? Same thing as last time and set it equal to zero and solve for the X value, which will give this uh, equal to zero. And according to the mark scheme here, the final answer should be, Oh, sorry, this should be 84. I wrote 42. This one's 84. That one was the 42. So this is the 84. So if you take the derivative and set it equal to zero, So X should be 189 kilometers as the minimum value. And then therefore the cost, when you substitute the 189 into the function would be about $670.86. And IB again accepts three sig fig, which would be 671.